Is Turkey's offensive in northern Syria plunging NATO into crisis? Does this call for more than diplomacy from Germany, from the EU? We are talking to Germany's defense minister, Annegret Kramp-Karrenbauer. Let's start with the big question, Syria. Minister, what will you say to your NATO colleagues when you meet with them later this week? I will tell them that the situation in northern Syria directly concerns the security interests of Europe and the security interests of Germany. This is a situation where the fight against ISIS terrorism must be continued, resolutely continued. We are currently experiencing a humanitarian disaster with hundreds of thousands of people fleeing, injured or dead. Europe, especially the Europeans in NATO, are now being called upon to propose how the situation in northern Syria can be shaped and pacified in the long term, in such a way that it suits the region, but also that we need a good solution regarding our relationship with our NATO partner, Turkey. What proposal, if any, will Germany make? My recommendation is that we establish an internationally controlled security zone in cooperation with Turkey and Russia. This security zone would seek to resume the fight against terror and against ISIS, which has currently come to a standstill. It would also ensure that we stabilize the region so that rebuilding civilian life is once again possible and so that those who have fled can also return voluntarily. We have to see to it that, on the one hand, Turkey does not remain in northern Syria. We see the invasion as a violation of international law, so the current situation must not be extended. And, on the other hand, that the territory of Syria remains intact as stated in the resolution passed by the United Nations. And that the constitutional process currently getting underway is continued. In my view, this requires a strong European initiative, one we should discuss bilaterally with Turkey and Russia. Germany should use its position in the United Nations Security Council to gain widespread international support. And together we should decide whether to appoint a special envoy. I believe that would be a strong political and diplomatic response from Europeans in NATO. Would that go beyond diplomacy? Would we see German troops on the ground? Or would you seek a UN mandate, unlikely as this is with Russia? First of all, this security zone would have to be under international control. And where the fight against ISIS is concerned, military capabilities would play a role. In my view, it is essential that we include Turkey in the discussions, because Turkey undeniably has its own security interests. But Russia has to be included too. Russia is one of the most important players in Syria, whether you like that or not. That is a fact that we have to deal with. I believe that these discussions are absolutely vital, preferably via the United Nations, but also through bilateral talks. The alternative would be for Europeans and NATO to simply look on as talks between Turkey and Russia continue, and to potentially risk Turkey becoming permanently entrenched in northern Syria. This is something that we cannot allow within NATO. That's why I believe that we must draw upon everything at our disposal to achieve a different result here. So how far would Germany go to implement this? Or are you banking on the US, like Germany and Europe have always done? 
Deutschland wie die Europäer es auch zuvor immer gemacht haben. Der Schlüssel liegt in der internationalen Kontrolle. The key to controlling this zone would be international cooperation, meaning we would need an internationally viable foundation, ideally with the UN mandate. Ein entsprechendes Mandat der Vereinten Nationen. The question of how Germany handles this politically and, more than anything, what that means for our armed forces is a question that must be decided by the Bundestag, as has been the case in previous mandates. Take the operation in Iraq against ISIS. There we're conducting aerial surveillance and training missions. That is all according to decisions made by the German parliament. Until now, the German armed forces have always provided the resources demanded of them by the Bundestag. What are these resources specifically? If we make it clear that we are already engaged in the fight against ISIS, but particularly in Iraq, then we have two skills, one of which is the ability to train, which we are currently implementing in the region, particularly in cooperation with the Peshmerga, and our ability to carry out aerial surveillance. We are currently seeing that ISIS has been pushed back, but not beaten. Its forces are retreating underground. Here, air surveillance images of Syria, our tornado reconnaissance aircraft, and our analysts help to locate terrorist hiding places. But above all, it is also our civilian, military and coordinated effort. In Iraq, we are very much involved in reconstruction in the Erbil region, through our development agencies, but also in establishing how to train local police forces. If you look at the situation in northern Syria, we will need a huge amount of international support for reconstruction to enable people to return to this region. I believe those are the qualities Germany could contribute. Your proposal would be a real paradigm shift. How sure can you be of the support of the Chancellor and of your own party? This is first of all a proposal that I'm making as party leader and as defense minister. I know it's a proposal that is supported by many defense and foreign policy experts in my party. Before going public with this recommendation, I informed the chancellor. This will definitely be discussed within the government. But we can't simply talk about Europe needing to be more than a bystander. We must come up with our own proposals to catalyze discussion. But what of the question of how you can get a coalition partner, the Social Democrats, to follow suit when they are clearly opposing NATO's 2% target? This is a conflict within the coalition. First of all, today the government spokesman asserted that the Foreign Officer's Assessment applies to the entire German government. This means that for us, as the German government, the Turkish deployment in northern Syria contravenes international law. The second point concerns the question of how we can stabilize a region that borders on the territory of a NATO partner and that affects the massive security interests of Europe and Germany. In my opinion, there is also the question of how we want to shape further cooperation within the alliance, particularly regarding the issue of Turkey as a NATO partner. Turkey is an important NATO partner, despite all the criticism that can be made. This question of how to act unitedly within the alliance is one that is on the political agenda. The sooner we find a common solution and a common initiative for Syria, the better we can conduct the debate amongst our partners within NATO. Umso besser können wir die Debatte auch zwischen den Partnern innerhalb der NATO führen. Before the deal between the U.S. and Turkey, you had quite clearly demanded consequences if Turkey occupied an area in northern Syria. 
What are the consequences that you ultimately demand? Or does that depend on this cooperation? Currently, the situation is that Turkish forces have crossed the border. Now the debate is specifically about how things will develop in the area. I have always made it quite clear that I consider this advance to be contrary to international law. But I am of the firm opinion that we must see the legitimate security interests of other countries. But my conviction is that these interests must be implemented by political and diplomatic means. We have seen Russian interventions in Crimea, Ukraine, in eastern Ukraine. We are now seeing it in the case of Turkey. If this spreads, it will violate the fundamental principles of post-war order in Europe. That is why we must preserve this principle. And that is why it's so important that we find a solution there. That's what this initiative is about, to help ensure that we prevent Turkey from permanently taking root in northern Syria and that Turkey withdraws as quickly as possible. In my view, Turkey will only withdraw if it has a guarantee for its own security security interests, and they can best be ensured internationally. You are also CDU party leader, and you've had to put up with a lot of criticism in the last few weeks and months. How much does it annoy you that the convention of you having first stab at becoming chancellor has been broken with? It's not an issue for me. I've always said that I was elected as party leader, so I see it as my job to lead from the front. I've made proposals, also with regard to the upcoming end of the normal period of office. At the moment, my fellow party members and I are concentrating on renewing the party profile with new key players and new faces and reorganizing the party so that we are able to forge a successful campaign at the next parliamentary elections and emerge as strongest party. That is the be-all and end-all for a successful chancellorship. How confident are you right now that this legislative period will last until 2021? Once again, I can say that the CDU is taking this responsibility very seriously and that we also want to take responsibility for this legislative period. That means until 2021. We can see how volatile the international situation is. We see that there are challenges in the economic sector. So there really is a lot to do. Voters expect us to answer their justified questions and not to spend the next few months, neither the SPD nor the CDU, only focusing on ourselves. Minister, thank you for this interview. You're welcome.